AM 970 WSTX. All right, folks. We're back here with Reflections. Here we got some guests in the house. And we're going to be talking about... Oh, my goodness. Earlier I was talking about Lion King. You know how I said Lion King? No, we're going to be talking about lionfish, folks. That's Doug and his silliness. Just, you know, you know how it is, folks, right? That's just Doug, right? We're going to be talking about the lionfish here in our Virgin Islands waters and some interesting things about the lionfish. And I'm going to tell you, folks, this is education for me, too. So hang in tight. Hold on, because the roller coaster going. All right. Good, good. And for my guests, I want you to go ahead and introduce yourselves, and then we can get into the, the discussion. Okay. Hey, Doug. Thanks for having us. My name is Paulita Bennett Martin. Um, I am a graduate student here from Emory University, and I am a fisheries outreach associate. Hi, I'm Holden Harris. I'm a PhD student at the University of Florida, and I work in fishery science. All right. Okay. Well, it doesn't end there. Tell me how you found out about the Virgin Islands and lionfish, and what what brought you here? Tell the story. We want to know. Okay. <laughs> um, so the Department of Environmental Studies at Emory University was looking at areas um, that funders were interested in learning about issues with lionfish, where they saw populations of lionfish, and um, didn't necessarily see markets for lionfish, and so their idea was to explore the potential, the feasibility for a market for lionfish um, as just one of the many controls that people are interested in for these populations. Uh, so that's kind of how we wound up here in St. Croix was a fluke. We were looking at, well, do we go and we work in St. Thomas or do we work in St. Croix? Since the study is interested in the local market and if there's feasibility for a local market, St. Croix seemed like a better fit because um, St. Thomas seemed to have a lot more uh, bustling tourism, and we really wanted to focus on what the, what the locals would be interested in. Okay. So now, my, my knowledge of the lionfish is that it's a, for the Virgin Islands that it's an invasive species, yep. and, uh, and, and as, as an invasive species, it ain't welcome you, <laughs> figuratively <laughs> speaking, and, and that... Um, Folks, they have no mercy on the lionfish simply because uh, having it to further populate is detrimental to, to other species that we Certainly. want to have around here. And, and that's probably the breadth of my knowledge of lionfish in, in that context. I mean, other than pictures and what they look like and, and so forth. But you're doing a, a study as I understand it. Yes. So what, what is your study about? What type of information are you looking for? Well, we're looking for, we're working with several different, I guess what we would call cohorts or groups of people. We're looking at the general public, general consumers. Uh, we're also looking at retail. That would be shop owners and restaurant owners. We're looking at tourist perspectives. And then we're, what we are mostly interested in at this point is fishermen perspectives. Because we really want to understand um, if lionfish can be fished and sold if there's a potential for fishermen to be able to make money off of lionfish, um, while also helping to control the population. So that's what we're looking at right now. We've done a lot of surveys with the general public, but right now we've been more breaking into the fishermen community because we really want this study to be steeped in what fishermen can do and, and how the study can potentially help what fishermen do. Holden, do you want to add to that? Yeah. Um, so, have you ever seen the movie Alien? Yes. Doug? It's, that's kind of what... I, I have a collection of every one of them. Yeah? <laughs> <laughs> so that's kind of what the lionfish are. It's like they're this perfect predator that brought over from the Indo-Pacific and uh, released near South Florida about 20 years ago, and now they've made their way over into the Caribbean. So in 2008, we first saw lionfish here in the Virgin Islands. And since then, talking with the divers, talking with the fishermen, they see tons and tons of lionfish. They say they see thousands of them. And the lionfish, they've evolved in a whole different habitat, and they evolved hunting techniques that the fish here have never seen before. So they can shoot jets of water. They use those big, beautiful fins to kind of corner fish into a hole and then eat them. They're really successful, and they eat tons and tons of little fish. 
So this is a problem because they're eating the little snappers, they're eating little groupers, and they're eating the same fish that the snappers and groupers eat. So we know that they're really bad for the environment. And that's why a lot of people are interested in trying to find a way to control lionfish because on top of being really, really good hunters, nothing seems to eat them. So the pro what we think is humans, humans can eat them. And elsewhere what we've seen is humans have started eating them and they're pretty tasty. And that's why we're trying to see if there's a market here in St. Croix. <coughs> well, you know, I, I think it starts with this, this discussion. Uh, and and for, for purposes of our public out there, <laughs> These folks ask me about the alien, and then we mention a perfect predator. Well, mm -hmm. a, a perfect predator is, is something that comes in to the environment, and it can kill and eat everything, but as you pointed out so well, nothing else goes after it. So all of a sudden, everybody is, is at the mercy. And I love my snapper and all these other fish that we have here, but if they keep eating a little one of them, eventually they're going to be even more scarce than they already are now. Okay, now, one of the things I'll throw out to you is, um, <clears throat> and, and depending on how the funding lines up and everything else, the, the real answer after you get past the fishermen and catching them is whether or not people are interested in eating lionfish. So, what I'm going to tell you is that in the Virgin Islands, and, and maybe it's a Caribbean thing, but I, I grew up here, and I'm going to tell you, we got a thing called a fish fry, okay? Yeah. So when you all set up a situation where there's some incentive for, for the fishermen to catch them and come in, and you have a, 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 a taste of St. Croix lion fish, mm -hmm. people go come out in droves because they want to know. Because for most, for most of us, I, I've seen the lion fish in pictures for the most part, but not real life and much less to say that I've eaten a lionfish uh, uh, flesh to say that I know how it tastes. And I think that that's something that's the next step. If you can, as much as possible, to push toward getting, getting the, the consumer context because the fishermen may be able to catch them, but if the community don't have a taste for it sure. and don't, don't, um, don't underestimate the Caribbean in terms of exotic foods. Yeah. And I'm saying in that sentence uh, in, in that all of a sudden we have the possibility of it being an exotic food. Yeah. Certainly. And that's definitely been an obstacle in other parts of the Caribbean. Um, I have experience in Belize. My family's Belizean and uh, I've been working there since 2012. Uh, the lionfish have definitely had a huge impact on the reef fish uh, through Belize and that's vital to our everything, our economy, our culture, everything. So there's been a big push to hunt the lionfish there, but that what exactly what you're saying, people weren't used to eating the lionfish. They thought of it as poisonous. You always hear that right away. When in fact it isn't, it's venom, the spines on it are venomous, but the meat is not poisonous. The fish itself is not poisonous. It's actually quite delicious. We've eaten it several times just in our short time here. Um, but as like you're saying, with outreach and, and um, awareness building, people have now started to grow to go to the restaurants and ask for lionfish, or go to the markets and ask for lionfish. Um, but it, did, it was a hurdle that people had to work through, uh, because also I would say that a lot of locals back home for me, they say, um, we don't want that because it's a pest. They don't see it as what they normally eat. But you can't underestimate the delicacy and like people being interested in trying new things and that's how you have to kind of work at it. And we are, what you just said with the fish fry, so the end of the month we're going to be putting together a lionfish cook party and probably at El Tuna Lagoon we're talking to a few people to work with us on that. Uh, so we are going to do something where the public could come out and hang out and well, you fish. came to the right place because <laughs> WSDX is a community-minded station and we will get the word out. So yeah. from today on, you keep in touch with us as far as getting the word we'll out. We'll get you the date and time when yeah. we're doing definitely, it. Definitely, definitely. Uh, fish fry, the, the, I don't know, it's going to be like a tasting type of thing, free mm -hmm. tasting. Yeah. Hey. I, I, I know quite a few people who, when they hear free, they come book it up, book it up, book it up, free and at the beach, you know, yeah. great things. But uh, seriously, though, 
you, you have to be creative in your solutions. And this, this is a problem that creativity is really what we need if we're going to solve it. Because yeah. if you have a perfect predator fish and you can make yourself, in this case, the human side of the equation into the, the, the new predator and mm -hmm. create a market, yeah. mm -hmm. the, the fishermen benefit. Exactly. Yeah. The restaurants can benefit. And because this fish is now coming in in such numbers, the, the cost in terms of uh, the, the cost for them could probably be within a re reasonable cost level. Yeah. Now, I talked about exotic foods. One of the problems when you say exotic foods is that very often the things are, uh, that are exotic are also endangered. Mm -hmm. And in this case, we don't have that problem. Yeah. We got something that, it got too much oil, mm -hmm. I am fish are wrong. We need to get mm -hmm. rid of you. And this is a constructive way to, to deal with that. Definitely. Yeah. We're yeah. eating the enemy. Yeah, you definitely. we eat the enemy. And there's certain fish that, you know, are saying, well, we shouldn't eat that because we've fished too much of it. We've eaten too many of some of these fish. And we're not, we're not here to study that at all. We're here to study there's lots and lots of lionfish. And we know that they're being, they're bad for the environment. So... Yeah. If we can remove those, we can, we can help the environment. And that, in turn, not only does it help the fishermen by catching these lionfish, giving them something to make a little bit more money, but then it helps prevent the lionfish from overeating the other reef fish. Yes. So it helps them all, all across the board. And there's places where they're doing this, where it has become a delicacy. So you go in the Florida Keys, and you go down there, and people, the restaurants can't get enough lionfish because everyone wants to eat lion. All right. Well, that's, a, that's the kind of information that we need. Mm -hmm. It's <coughs> being sold at Whole Foods now as well, so it's being adopted by major chains too. So there's, there's a lot. There's enough to... F and we're good at eating our way out of species, so... <laughs> yeah, well, you know, the, 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 the thing here for me is, is the, the, the debunking of myths and stereotypes is important because, like you said, when I hear lionfish, I think poisonous. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And nobody really explained or talked about, well, it's the spines that are poisonous, not the fish itself. Mm -hmm. Okay, that makes sense. I understand that. Yeah. Um, in, in that context. So that's something that has to be, to be pushed, that, hey, folks, it's fish. It ain't poisonous fish. It's fish. The spines on the fish have venom in it, but not the fish itself. And then by having this type of... Uh, fish fry out at Lagoon where people could come out and taste it for themselves and say, yeah, okay, tastes good. Mm -hmm. we, yeah, we can develop a market for that. Certainly. Yeah. Mm. And what we want to do is, you know, we have some ideas. We've seen what has been done elsewhere in the Cayman Islands and the Florida Keys and such. But what we want to do as researchers is we want to come in and we want to talk to the people here to find out what's going on here in St. Croix before we make recommendations for moving forward. I, we think that too many, too often people come in with these ideas as, hey, this is what you have to do. And so that's what we're doing here in the research phase of this project. So that's why we're doing these interviews. Ideally, we want to interview every fisherman. We want to interview every person that buys fish to find out what's the culture here, what are you already doing before we tell you what we think you should be doing. Well, well folks, there's more information available on Facebook. And what I'll tell you is if you're looking for them on Facebook, Lionfish Study will probably bring it up, okay? But um, if you have a problem with that, you just can put in the URL for facebook.com slash lionfishvi, okay? We got them here in the VI. Remember that, Lionfish VI. And they are a problem for us because we have enough issues with bleaching of reef. We don't need the lionfish to now come on top of that and be cornering the few fish that are populating our reefs and otherwise bringing the edible, other edible fish here. So we're looking at a win-win situation here. Mm -hmm. If we can turn lionfish into a marketable fish, we can use the human consumption of, as a way of bringing into control the otherwise exploding population. Yeah, exactly. That's killing off all the other fish. Okay. Fantastic. And if I could add one more thing, um, if fishermen are interested in talking to us, the Facebook page is excellent. Again, facebook.com forward slash lionfishvi. We'll be at the Frederickstead Rhythm Festival as well 
uh, doing a little bit of awareness. So if All someone's right. curious about stuff, or if you're a fisherman that wants to speak with us or do the survey, which we do compensate you for taking that time. Um, so please check us out. Wait, 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 no. Wait, you just said something. <laughs> <coughs> fisherman, are you hear that? <laughs> The pain are you to be involved in a survey, fisherman, are you hearing that? So in addition to sitting on the side of the road selling your fish, you could have them stop by and talk with you and whatever, and through that you could make some money? All right, fisherman, I ain't hear a better deal than that <laughs> one there yet. Okay, great. I am happy that you came, came by here today. Now, in terms of contact information for the future, how do the fishermen or anybody else for that matter get in touch with you? We've got, so um, we've got t contacts here we can leave at the station. We've got the Facebook page and then I'm happy to give my email address out over the radio if you think that's helpful. Well, um, um, what, no, I think what, what you're going to do is leave that information with me so I can start talking about yes. it in the course of the event. There we go. Because uh, you might mention it now, and then people forget. might forget, mm -hmm. so forth and so on. Now, so we'll leave a few of these, actually, with you. Okay. And all of these faces are people who are here and involved? or uh, The top four are. Yes, that's me there. This okay. is Holden. And then Kate, Kate was working a lot with the consumer surveys and interviews. So if you're a restaurant interested in this, okay, uh, right there. And Natalie is also working on the fisheries team as well. Okay. And mm -hmm. there, there are four other people. And just in general terms, what are their roles in terms of? Um, so Dr. Page here is our GIS specialist. Uh, Dr. Evans is an advisor to, to the students from University of Florida. Uh, Dr. Sweeney Tooks is an anthropologist who also helped design the research. Uh, and Dr. Yandel is the Emory professor and the PI on the project. So she's She's the top dog, basically, right, right here. And we have this, this uh, broad team across disciplines. We have spatial mapping. We have economists working on this. We have fishery scientists working on this, and anthropologists all working together. And uh, you might see us walking around, too. We all, when, when we're out, we have these shirts with lionfish on them. And we're going to leave you one. Okay, we brought fantastic. one for you. Fantastic. All right. Well, I ask because I, I will incorporate this into uh, the stuff that I use, whether on Facebook and so forth and so on. So oh, I, thank I you. Can explain, I can explain that and that they, they will say that the you know, familiar faces are the top four and the others are other, you know, uh, hard hitters that are involved in the yeah. behind the scenes. And they yeah. come, but they only come for short periods of time, whereas we're here for the three-month stretch. So ha okay. Yeah, have them call us, you know. Okay. Well, I'm going to be talking about this. Uh, and I'm going to integrate it into my ongoing discussions, and I'm going to share it with, with the other hosts, because here we have an opportunity to, to further grow a, a sector of business. Mm -hmm. I'm concerned. This is nothing but potentially beneficial to the fishing industry and the fishermen here. So this is a win-win situation. There's no downside to this. The only downside is if we sit back and do nothing, and let the, the, uh, the lionfish just come in and, and destroy our, our supply of fish, ultimately, because that's what it breaks down to. Mm -hmm. right. If we sit back and do nothing, then we're going to reap what we sow. Yeah. Very true. Right. Yeah. So I, I, I'm, I'm glad that you had a chance to End of June. That's when we'll do our, our cooking cooking out party. We'll be doing grilling and frying. Okay. Well, uh, the, the point of being here, I will make sure that you, you get my, my contact information accordingly because whenever you have any type of milestone thing that's happening, mm -hmm. just give me a heads up. Send it okay. over to uh -huh. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and we'll get it out. Between the various uh, hosts that we have here, we'll get it out. Okay. Because the important thing here is that this benefits the Virgin Islands left and right. It's just like in your face. Okay. Duh. <laughs> 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 okay. I'm so glad that you came in here today. Thank you for this having just, us. This just makes sense. Okay. And, and we so, think so. Yeah. So definitely, I want to wish you both the best. Thank you. Uh, thank and you. Feel free if any way that I can be a further assistance in getting the word out, you know, uh, definitely um, the, the, the fishermen. See, because your fishermen may not necessarily be on Facebook. Yeah. Right. 
Mm -hmm. And that's why I was asking you about contact information because if you, I'm, you're going around for the, the fishermen and dropping off the cards. Yeah. yeah, we've kind of yep. been hitting up just anyone we see that looks like a fisherman. We stop by, give them cards. Some of them take surveys right there on the spot. We're hitting a few of the regular spots like um, Lorraine and uh, the different docks. And so we have some normal spots, but it's also a lot of searching because everyone's not in one place. In one They're place. all over. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, you heard it here at WSDX, folks. If you're a fisherman, fisherwoman, your family, friend, whoever involved in the fishing industry, you have people here on St. Croix doing surveys about the lionfish and they paying you to take the <laughs> survey. Okay? I, I don't know how to break it down any better than that. Okay? They pay you to take the survey. All right? It just make sense. Okay? <laughs> so definitely, when they come your way, give them that crucial hospitality, smile, handshake, the whole nine yards. Take the survey, be a little bit richer, and just understand that this is the possibility of opening up new markets for you with our restaurants here, in our community in general. And now I know that the, the fish is edible. I'm looking forward to my tasting. Mm. At the end of the month, folks, we're going to have a little mini fish fry, if you want to call it that. And I'd right. like to say thank you, too, sir. We've talked to maybe about 16, 20 fishermen so far. And uh, you got the Crucians here. You guys are the friendliest people. It really, you know, yep. they've helped us out with our research. And, you know, we try to make the survey, you know, nice and easy, painless. It's only about 10, 15 minutes. All right. But they've been so friendly. And uh, if any of you listen, I want to say thank you to uh, all the hospitality everyone's shown us so far. Department of Tourism, you're hearing this? Definitely. Okay. Oh, man. <laughs> so nice, everyone. They're giving us mangoes and smiles and great times. All right. Fantastic. 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 We love to hear these type of things because that is our nature. That <laughs> is. is our nature, to be embracing and friendly and otherwise uh, accommodating. And in this case, um, you, you know, you just never know. Uh, you just never know who... You're talking to on St. Croix. I was telling someone the other day about this that uh, at one point in time here on, on, in the Virgin Islands and, well, you know, probably in the States too. But come 6 o'clock in the afternoon, everything stopped because you had all my children and all of this stuff when the soaps were in. Okay? <laughs> come 6 o'clock, everything stopped. Don't do nothing to harass your parents or whoever because they, they will throw something. Leave me alone. Let me watch the results, okay? But, for instance, um, Agnes Nixon, writer, producer, her family, they had a house here. They'd be walking among us and nobody know because they're just ordinary people, folks. You just never know who you're talking to. So always give that nice, crucial smile, crucial hospitality. Of course, we expect the, the behavior to, to be in line also, but that's usually <laughs> not the problem, okay? And just the same way I make sure my young people know that it's good morning, good afternoon, and all this other good stuff. Hey, don't let it go. Even when you have a bad experience, don't let it go. It's a great thing to hold on to. It's part of the character of, the, of St. Croix, and we don't want to lose it. We want to hold on to it and nurture it, okay? Mm -hmm. So when yeah. you come in here and tell us of your experience like this, I really appreciate that. Folks can hear it. All right? Fantastic. Nice. Okay. Well, I look forward to hearing from you on a regular basis. Keep me in touch. Definitely. I'm looking forward to the mini fish fry. I'm looking forward to the, uh, the, the uh, fishermen uh, doing a petition and writing to the Department of Interior and everybody else in support of what you're doing. <laughs> <laughs> Not that the Interior would be the one to try to. But I'm just saying uh, we have to be proactive in that sense. So. Good luck. Definitely. Thank Good you. Luck. Thank right. you so much. Okay. All right, folks, you heard it there on WSTX AM 970. Fisherman, it got money coming to you for even not catching a fish yet? Hey, I telling you, you got to get out there and, and, and be a part of the solution. And don't complain to me you didn't get yours, you know, it, it, it there. <laughs> okay? All right, so... You got to go out there. And now, people out of, of, of the Virgin Islands, people on St. Croix, I learned something very interesting today. The lionfish is 
edible the spines are what is poisonous so i looking forward to this mini fish fry up here at lagoon so that i could get my taste of the lion fish uh maybe before that even if you you know of um of somebody that have one come in and they just want to throw it away don't throw it away take off the spines and treat it like a regular fish put it in some some butter sauce or pour on the cold pot and and, and roast it do something with it check it out and then give me a call and give me your feedback or better yet give me a call when it cooks so i could come and help you. <laughs> <laughs> all right okay this has been fantastic all right good good let me um let me see uh call fuzzy for me there for a quick second yeah we'll take a a, a quick break in in a few minutes but this is wstx am 970 773-0390 773-0490 okay and we have folks from emory university in collaboration with the uh the university of florida all right, and they're doing a lionfish study here in the Virgin Islands, St. Croix in particular, that is trying to figure out if there's a possibility that we can have part of our market for fish here include lionfish yeah. and help us save our fish, our reefs in the process, and definitely give us some more fish to fry and have for <laughs> entertainment and fun. Not to mention the the, the uh, increase in economic activity for our fishermen. Okay, so we're going to take a little break here and we'll be back in a minute.